What's up, guys? Hello and welcome back from the MLG Studios here in New York City. My name is Axel Sauce. I am joined by Axlab. How are you doing today, man? I'm doing excellent today. Of course, the winter exhibition matches continue. Yep. Winter exhibition well, is a bracket of 16 people. Everyone who lost in that first round, uh, they got like a little bit of a second the chance. The first round of the, the winter championship oh, yes. event. Yes. Of course, huge live event that happened a couple weeks ago, a couple weekends ago. Uh, and if you missed any of that, youtube.com slash official MLG SE2. 1080p bots are there. But yeah, as you said, the losers from round one, they get a second chance. At some someone. cash. Yeah. At some cash. Yeah. Not to, it's not like we're going to go back in time and then throw them back into the tournament, have them play uh, life. We ended up winning the whole thing. Spoiler alert. Um, but yeah, we've been going for about three days. So if you're just now joining us, welcome. I hope you uh, tune in. Of course, 5 p.m. Eastern every single day is what we're looking to do, except for Saturdays and Sundays. And there you see the bracket in front of you. Marine King took down Seed 3-2. to two. That was the great series. That was an amazing series. That was on Tuesday? Yes. Was it was Tuesday. on Tuesday. And uh, all those VODs, YouTube.com slash official yep. MLGSC2. You can go watch those right and now. And that was the best series so far this event, I have to say. Yes, absolutely. Very exciting series. Game 4 was my personal favorite of that uh, of that quarrel. Of course, at the, the bottom left there, the southwestern region of the bracket. We got Vibe advancing over State and Bly advancing over Suppy. The round of eight will continue next week. Of course, uh, on the right side of the bracket, those matches will happen next week as well. Uh, except uh, Stefano Thorzane. Stefano was not able to participate, so um, Thorzane gets gets a bye there. So Thorzane will be playing the winner of Minigun and Creator. And of course, we still have Sase Ghost user Hero Feast coming your way. So lots of exciting matches, which brings us to today's match, which I am very excited for. It's going to be Huck and Baby Night now. Um, my name, Axelab, as you know, is Axel Toss. So uh, I play Protoss, right? Makes sense. I know a lot of people's minds are like, Psh, amazing. Um, so I, when I follow, like, these are the Protoss players that I am honestly uh, a personal fan of, to be completely transparent. Um, as a Protoss player, you're always looking for someone to watch, a stream to watch, you know, someone to root for. Huck and Baby Knight, they're up there on my list of Protosses that I cheer for. And they're going to be going at it against each other in this PvP. So I, personally, am very excited. I am too, of course. You know, Heartless Swarm, a lot of new things that have been changing into matchups. PvP is one of the matchups that's actually changed the most. Uh, and these two guys are both exceptionally good at it. Um, you know, Huck, historically, PvP has been his best matchup. Baby Knight, excellent Blink Micro player, which is such yeah. a, a key aspect in PvP as well. And we, we can see there, Huck, you know, 61% in PvP. Uh, most of his top achievements... Uh, are, are, are when he runs into mostly Protoss in the later rounds of the tournaments because he's so good at devising build orders and mind gaming his opponent. Mm -hmm. And PvP, because it's a lower economic situation than most other matchups for a little bit longer, those mind games can be much, much, much more effective. It's a very micro-intensive matchup, too. Oh, yes. Uh, you know, like, if you're talking about Blink Stalker Wars, there's so much micro involved there. Of course, early skirmishes between Stalkers and Zealots and Mothership Corps and whatnot, those are very micro-intensive as well, as well as Colossi in the later game, you know, pulling those weakened ones back. And Huck, of course, uh, top three control is, is the famous quote from him. But if we're talking about micro, this guy, Baby Knight, John Anderson from Denmark, um, He's, if anyone's known for micro, it might, it might be him. Uh, he made his name in the esports scene in Dota and was actually the best in the world, I think, at one point in some online ranking system. I'd have to do my uh, research a little bit more, but um, I know for a fact that he was a very famous Dota player before switching over to StarCraft 2. And uh, his success is, is, is getting there. It's definitely continuing in a sense. He's probably regarded as one of the better Protosses in Europe. You know, Grubby's going to be up there. Um, of course, Naniwa. Uh, you know, Baby Knight is going to be up there in the top five of Protoss is in Europe, and he's definitely trying to make his stand, um, you know, not only in the foreign scene, not only in his local scene, which he does very well in his, he won the Denmark WCS, but, but around the world. So we'll have to see uh, if he can make a statement here against Huck. It's going to be a very exciting match to see. Both these guys are very, very good at micro, very, very good at PvP. Let's just get right into game number one. Let's do it. Of course, this is a best of five, and the winner will advance to the next round of this winter exhibition again. A bracket involving the 16 players who lost in the first round of the winter championship event. The first map is going to be Star Station. One of the, the newer maps in the map pool in the top right hand location. We have the red Protoss player who was originally on 
was on Team Liquid not too long ago, but then uh, made the switch over to Team Evil Geniuses. An announcement that took many off guard, but um, definitely regarded as one of the better North American players to ever play the game of StarCraft II. He is Huck. He is a dual citizenship, uh, Canada and the United States. He is definitely a, a, a foreigner hero. Um, had a stint in Korea. He's actually in Korea right now. Playing in the EGTL house, preparing for Pro League, and training hard uh, over there. So, best of luck to him in his endeavors in Korea. And of course, he has Twitter, at Chris Loringer. He is very active on his Twitter, so be sure to follow him. Uh, he's a funny guy. He makes funny tweets and uh, definitely interacts with his fans a lot there. Of course, not to be ignored, his opponent in the bottom left-hand location, hailing from Denmark. Trying to make his own name in the Foreigner Prodoss scene. He is Baby Knight, also known as John Anderson. And uh, he also has a Twitter, at FXO Baby Knight, and he's also very um, active with Twitter as well. And he streams a lot. Both these guys stream a lot, so definitely check out the Twitters, check out their streams. If, you wanna, if you're looking for a Prodoss to follow, to interact with, these are your gentlemen. And Baby Knight actually recently switched his monitor from 4x3 to widescreen. Nick, I know you knew that I was going to bring this up, so I'd like to give the floor to you regarding that that change. You know he's kind of a traitor. <laughs> for, <laughs> for, those of you, for, life. For, for those of you who don't know, this is a guy, Nick is a guy who literally got his first smartphone last week. You can confirm. Yes, last week. And he still is a, a 4x3 guy. There's a lot of other embarrassing technology stories related to Nick, but those are for another day. Um, you're sticking with the 4x3, even though Baby Knight, the Protoss hero, is uh, switching over to the widescreen. I mean, I was on 4x3 when, when he was still a baby. So <laughs> <laughs> I've, I'm the original 4x3 guy. I've still got a... Uh, Fair enough. Fair enough. So going forward here in this actual game, yeah. uh, one thing we noticed is Huck got his second gas a little bit faster, delayed the Psychor, and uh, what that meant he could do is he could put two probes on each gas and uh, basically mine four guys from gas, but it mines faster than if you had three on one geyser and one on the other actually. So a very, very effective uh, basically utilization of, of the macro mechanics in StarCraft 2 to get a little bit of extra gas boost going into the early game. And he's also went up to double gateway. This is a build. Uh, I've actually seen a lot of Protoss doing and what they do is ah. uh, they crank out three to five stalkers and then they often get that that uh, the core out, the, the mothership core. They put on a little bit of pressure, enough to make sure their opponent didn't fast expand. And then they usually expand behind it and, and uh, get some uh, map control that way. This is something I've been playing around with. Um, you know, saving a lot of that chrono, really getting that warp gate out as fast as possible, and then trying to hit with, with you know, six to seven to eight stalkers. Uh, before your opponent's warp gate can finish up. Because generally a Protoss player, if they're not going to be aggressive, we see a Stalker extending a little bit here from Huck. If they're not going to be aggressive, they're not going to be necessarily chrono boosting that warp gate, right? They're going to be chrono boosting their probes. They're going to be uh, chrono boosting their maybe maybe a gateway unit. Um, but uh, Huck here, attributing a lot of chrono boost to that warp gate. And uh, he's going to finish it up here when he's going to have about five Stalkers at his opponent's front, front door and the ability to tack on two more, two or three more, or three actually, more. yeah, three, three more, more out of that, uh, out of the warp gate. You know what's interesting is this kind of uh, Psychor that Huck is building, it's a little bit delayed because of course he got the three gateways first, but he could do a lot of interesting things with this. Of course, with the frontal pressure, Baby Knight's not going to basically devote significant resources to scouting, so uh, Huck could either go to Blink or he could do some kind of interesting delayed Dark Templar play as well. This is a little bit dangerous. Huck gonna come up and try to get up this ramp here. Charging forward with the Stalker, trying to target fire down that Mothership Core. There's the Time Warp from Baby Knight, but the Mothership Core does go down. Great force field here from Baby Knight. There are two Zealots wailing away at those Stalkers. They have two kills each. And remember, those two kills each are on Stalkers, so that's very cost efficient indeed. But uh, Huck still has three Stalkers here, warping in more reinforcements. He's gonna have six in total. And again, Baby Knight lost his Mothership Core. He has his target on the field, but two Phoenixes, not a Void Rays. That could be enough to hold this off. Oh, it's gonna be so tough. You can have two stalkers, but Huck still has more forces on the ground than Baby Knight. Baby Knight was only one century, couldn't keep those force fields up. Huck got up the ramp, but now he has a dominant advantage in the stalker count. Of course, Baby Knight does have three warp gates, so once he warps in a few more units, pulling a few probes there, I think he should be able to hold this off, but how much damage can Huck do? Actually, Huck's in a micro away from the probes, focusing on stalkers one by one. The Phoenixes have no energy. There's the GG from Baby Knight Huck. 
uh, going for that very aggressive build. Uh, again, he had a Twilight Council behind this, so he had intentions of transitioning out of it should it be necessary. I imagine the Blink since Shorty has so many stalkers. Um, but, you know, that's just uh, a build that's kind of designed to take advantage of a potentially greedy Protoss. And, and it's not like Huck was, it's not like Baby Knight was being very greedy. He had three Warp Gates and a Stargate on one base. Like, imagine if he got a Void Ray instead of two Phoenixes. How big of a difference would that be, especially against exclusively Stalkers with it, Prismatic Alignment, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, he did really a great job with that first uh, engagement, yeah, the force did. field. He got four Stalker kills, and that was huge. But I think the problem he had is that he only had one Sentry. Uh, and, and if you're going to get the Stargate as fast as Baby Knight did, I think you really want to get that second Sentry as well. Or push out and and then uh, basically have the map control so that they can't get that pylon very, very close to you. So Baby Knight kind of, he stayed very defensive, but he only had the one Sentry, and Huck really just took advantage of that. He also had the, had the Time Warp, and um, he, he ended up losing his Militia Core, so he didn't have the yeah. ability to Photon Overcharge onto his main Nexus, which, which could have been decently helpful there, but at that point... By his time. Yeah, he was kind of banking all of his all of his uh, his mindset, his energy, on preventing Huck from getting up the ramp. He did a great job at first, but then Huck was able to get through, had three gateways worth of reinforcement, and uh, Baby Knight had no answer. But the good news for Baby Knight is that this is a best of five, so Huck is up one to zero. We'll have to see what happens. Game two, coming up.